Does your Mr. Coffee One Touch Coffee House drip coffee slowly like this? Then you have a problem. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to troubleshoot and fix. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we are working on a broken latte espresso coffee machine by Mr. Coffee. I mean, there's literally just droplets. So something's wrong. Obviously, I'm just going to turn this off. It says there's no serviceable parts without a uh, service technician. Yeah, right. Nothing of much use in the maintenance section. So I'll start troubleshooting with the easy things first. Then we'll follow the water flow and try to cut the problem in half, thereby making our job a lot easier. I'm gonna make sure that water flows through here okay. But I believe it is, and I'll tell you why. Because if you just turn the machine on, without the porta filter in it, you still see it's only a few drops coming out. We're just gonna test the flow coming out of the tank. This is the beginning of our water journey. And what exists is this little spring-loaded plug on the bottom. And so as you sit this down on the coffee machine, that plug moves up and our water comes out. Now, that looks like a pretty good water flow to me. So I don't believe this water tank nor the plug down here is our problem. Why don't we try to take this back panel off first and see if we can kind of see in so I'm able to get it with a straight screwdriver. There we go. The screws on the exterior of the appliance are Y-shaped security screws. You can use a flat screwdriver if you're careful to get these out if you don't have the correct screwdriver. Now we're gonna move the side of the appliance and this is the side opposite of the tank. Remove the three Phillips screws and push the cover forward to remove. Repeat the same procedure for the cover on the water tank side, this will reveal eight Phillips screws in the front that will allow us to release the top of the machine. Grab the top and pull firmly up and toward the front to release the clips. All right, we've got this thing tore down all the way now. So here I'm finding the exit valve from our boiler tank and tracing that water flow to the head of the machine. And you can see here that I have released the tube from the front of the head of the machine. And this is going to help us isolate if we have flow out of the tank. All of the tubes are released from the valves in the same manner. So just bend the bottom legs of the metal clips and then pull the metal clips out. Be careful when you pull the tube out. There are two orange O-rings in the valve and they may pop out. You're going to need those. I've got it plugged in right now and I'm going to see hot water should come out this tube here. I'm gonna wear a glove just in case it uh, gets too hot. So our problem still exists. That means the problem is further upstream. Let's move further upstream to the pump. I'm plugged in, so I'm not gonna touch too much here, but uh, this is the water pump. You can take this thing apart, take those two screws that I'm pointing to there, press this in, twist it. There's a good YouTube video on how to work on these water pumps. So all I did was I took this water pump apart, I checked that the springs weren't broken, and I checked that the little ball valve that exists in here was not stuck. And I made sure all the O-rings were good and this pump was not leaking anywhere. And I put it back together. And so right now what I'm doing is just testing the pump. So I have the electrical connections connected. This thing is hot and it's plugged in. Let's see if we get a stream of water coming out of this thing when I press the on the uh, manual button over here. That's a pretty good stream right there. So I'm, I feel satisfied that the, the pump is working. All right, so taking the pump out and taking the pump apart was probably to the extreme. I was just curious on how these Ulka pumps work. This is a vibratory pump. It's an Ulka EP5. You probably don't need to do that. Probably just release the tube from the output of the pump and see if water is being pumped from the water tank to the output. One big clue is that there were no water leaks anywhere I could find, so there was no water on, on the countertop ever. So I felt pretty safe that there were no leaks, and uh, if the pump works, then our problem lies somewhere else. So what we know at the moment is, is that our pump works. So there is water being pumped from the tank, through the pump, through the exit valve, toward the boiler unit. So now we turn our suspicion to the actual boiler unit or a valve on the boiler unit. There's not a whole lot you can do with this boiler unit unless you take it out. So I'm releasing the Phillips screws on the top. 
that uh, hold down some of the cables. I release all of the electrical connections and then remove the crossbars that you see at the top held down by four Phillips screws. Next, I release the four Phillips screws that affix the boiler unit to the frame and lift the boiler unit out. With the boiler unit out, I blew in the input tube to see if any air would exit here. And right away, I knew there was a problem. Now, when I took this out, you can't see it right now because I've put some vinegar in here and cleaned it out. There was large scale buildup inside here. There was large scale buildup and see this little hole in here that goes to the output there. That had com that was completely blocked. I couldn't even blow through it. So I took a 90 degree pick and I went in here and I cleaned that out as best as I could. And it was totally blocked. I mean, it just had pellets of scale in here. Can you say no maintenance? By the way, the bottom of the boiler unit is removed with those four hex bolts that you see there. Now that we've unclogged the boiler unit, let's put it back in the machine. Okay, I've got the boiler unit back in and I've got all the water tubes connected except for the one coming out of this, this black valve here. And that goes to the drip head. So I'm gonna leave that undone. Don't do what I'm doing. Time to retest. There's water. That's more than we got before. So now we've verified water is being pumped in and out of the boiler unit and to the head. So that's good news. Word of caution, it's hot. So be careful, wear a glove. What I want to do now is uh, get this tube hooked back up and see if it comes out the, the drip head. As I was saying, these tubes just fit in. There's two orange O-rings inside there. Um, you got to make sure this tube fits in there. And then there's a lock, this little lock here. Have drip you have a good flow coming out okay so you'll notice that i've taken apart way more than i've told you in the previous part of the video and that is completely unnecessary but i was just curious how the control panel integrates with the rest of the machine so i took a lot of things off that were probably unnecessary to troubleshoot and fix this problem i believe that solved our problem so we had so much scale build up inside of the uh the boiler there that water couldn't exit this valve here and come through our uh, drip head here. Just a note, we tried to descale this machine the day before by letting vinegar run through the system. It was just too clogged to help. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you four times reinstall speed. I do recommend taking pictures throughout the process. Here I'm referencing a picture so I can put the cable ties back in the correct position. So let's see if we can get it on there without breaking any clips. I'm gonna put it on like that and try to slide it back in place at the top here. There we go. All right, this thing just has the tabs at the bottom that slide in. And then it just pops in at the top. A couple of snaps on the side there. Put the water tank back on. A frother back on. Turn her on the heater up. Lights have stopped blinking. Ready for a test. There you go. So for now, it's fixed. Don't forget to descale your machine regularly. Brought to you by me.